the shalababababaka is in the inside. What you're talking to them, they're shakatolobabakata in the inside. Because the spirit of the Lord is showing them who you are and what you're all about. There are people that are here that God is saying, it's time to stand up, baby. I know you, you've been afraid. I know you think you're not ready, but I am trying to launch you out. You are armed and dangerous in the spirit, and I need you to wake up. I need you to stand up. I need you to speak truth. I need you to voice the word of the Lord. I need a generation that will stand and declare that God is still on the throne. And we're not afraid what is going to happen because we know that we have been called by purpose and with purpose. Come on, give a hand. ready these are the people that don't make their own voices be heard you know there are people that make their own voices be heard God said with this these leadership and these people that I'm rising up they don't make their voices be heard I make their voices be heard Psalms 19 3 and 4 it says there is no speech nor are there words who voice is not heard their voice goes out through all of the earth and their words to the end of the world then he has sent a tent for the sun he is the one who makes their words go to the end of the world you are sitting here in Kissimmee and you're speaking the word of the Lord in Africa hmm their apostolic roar yeah. they're being influencers even here and you haven't even left your house because they're not giving out business cards to get their voices heard God is making their voices heard even when no one wants to listen who am I talking to this is a generation that will not be bound by religion. There will be no tradition that will hold them back. The systems of the world, financial systems will not limit them. I say it again, you should have said amen because I know that a lot of us are going through financial difficulties but if you believe your money, it comes from the government then that's why you have the limitation but God is saying be free in the name of the Lord. Your money is not from the system. You are a kingdom citizen and your money comes from the kingdom, comes from the creator who made the gold and the silver. The Bible says they are mine and I and you are mine and everything I have it is yours we need to change our perspective we don't belong in this world even though we're living in this world who can say amen I'm talking about a people that will break all limitations and boundaries they are the movers like I said they are the shakers they are the one that's going to speak and things will be removed in the name of the Lord God in this hour is moving the things that are movable. So the things that are unmovable will remain. Can I, under, can I say that again? Do you understand that? That's why you see the shaking. It's a global shake. Greece, China, you know, Portugal. Africa, United States, everywhere there is a shaking and you think, oh my God, the end of the world. And God is saying, no, I am moving the things that I can remove. So the things that cannot be removed will remain. Because the Bible thinks that the carnal things are removable, but the things that are eternal shall never be removed. So those that wait on the hand of the Lord, those that understand that God has given you a word, the word of God will remain forever. The earth and all its things shall pass away. You will see things be moved, but 
if you are standing and persevering in the word of God, you shall not be moved. The Bible says we shall not be embarrassed. This is not an embarrassing season for the church. This is a season of jubilee. This is a season where you say, I am proud to be a believer. I am proud to be a son and daughter of the almighty God. I am proud to be part of this kingdom because I know that at the end we are going to win. We already know the final decision. Say with me, we will win. You have to understand that we will win. We will win. Say with me, we will win. Listen to this. These young leaders, and I'm giving you a lot of bits and pieces so you understand that these leaders are not just risen to the position without a developmental stage. They have been tested as vessels of truth and honor. They stand in truth. They stand in honor. God is bringing a generation that is radical, unusual, unfamiliar, but that would never go against the word. Who can say amen? They are the ones that are interceding in this hour for this nation. While we are sleeping, there's people waking up to cry out to the Lord. And we see that God is saying, look among the nations and watch and be utterly astounded. For I will work a work in your days which you will not believe though it, it was told to you. We are the people that will walk in the streets and heal the sick. And even if I told you today, you shall not believe it. But when you see it, you shall know that the word of the Lord has come to pass. They are the millennials. They are the people that we can instruct and we can develop. And they are young and they're bold. And God is saying, I want to rise these people so they can live a life of mature Christianity that they will have longevity that they will walk and not be afraid I'm talking about these are people these are bad people I'm talking about these are forerunners they're trendsetters I'm talking about a people that will say, I will carry this burden and this mission to the end. They're burdened to see their people next to them fall in sin. They have the burden to see people dying and no one helping. They have burden to see how there's necessities in the street and they don't have money, but yet God has promised them money. Those are burden for God. You know that every miracle that Jesus did, it was because he had compassion for the people. You can't be a Jesus lover if you don't have compassion. You can't say you love God and not have compassion. You can't say you're part of this movement if you don't have compassion. And God is saying, in this generation, these leaders, these people, they have been discipled, but they love, they have the burden in their hearts. They, they understand that God is the only way. They're, they're talking about, you know, Jesus, uh, just fill my thirst, fill my hunger. They're talking about, I can't make it if you're not here with me. They're just so hungry for God. They, they understand that, they, you know, if they have to roll around in the floor, how many times do I got to jump? What do I have to do to get to the place where I have... I'm going to be positioned uh, where I'm going to be more filled with you. you. You're talking about what do I have to do? What church? Uh, how many hours do I got to drive to find you, Jesus? Uh, there are people that will just do anything for God. God said, I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for people that won't be compromised with this world, won't be compromised with their daily life, but looking for people that will be hungry. When do you open up the church? Uh, instead for the church we waiting for you you'll be waiting for the church to open I am talking about a people that will be standing in lines outside of the church and say open up please I want to worship I just want to throw myself on the altar and just cry because I understand that I need 
needs you, Jesus. Where are those people that God is saying, where are you? Where are my Elijahs? Where are my Elishas? Where are my Esthers that say, what do I got to do to save my people? Why do I have to go? Do I have to run to the king? Where are my Deborahs? Where are my people that I'm looking for in this generation to say, I am the answer to your problem because I love Jesus and Jesus loves you. Look at me. Look at me. He sent me with the solution for you. Look at me. I am the voice of my father. I am my father in the earth. I am the kingdom ambassador. I am the ambassador. Oh, look at me. Whatever you need, I have it in the name of Jesus. Come on, give a hand clap praise. Come on, give me five more minutes. We have to bring a reformation of change through the word and understand that if you want change, you have to be the change. You have to make the change. You want change, then you need to change yourself. I want change in my marriage. Well, you need to change yourself first. I want change in my family. You need to change yourself. Or I want change in my neighborhood. You need to change yourself. I want change in my city. Well, you need to be changed first. You can't expect other people to change if you haven't changed yourself. God is saying these leaders are not hypocritical leaders. They're not insulting leaders. They're not bowed mouth leaders. I'm not talking about you have to stand up and, and be that type of leader. I am talking about a leader that has the fruit of the spirit that understands understands that they have to honor they have to submit uh, they understand that God God appoints leaders and he takes out leaders uh, so God understands the times that we're living in but if we cry out to the name of the Lord if we understand that our our salvation comes from the Lord then we're not gonna attack anybody in this earth uh, we are going to go to the father because he understands that we're living in in this government in this age that we have are looking forward to what he's going to do and he said that he has the answers and because we are in him and he is in us then we are called to give the answers we are the leaders that are in the forefront we are telling the next generation this is how we're going to do we're gonna win this battle you're gonna win that addiction you're gonna not get the force you will make it you will do it God will live in you and he will live in him God is saying I will make you fishers of men these are the people that understand that restoration is in order and they are the people that will be the next fathers and mothers in this generation I end up with this phrase I do glory trainings in the morning and glory trainings are just trainings that develop people to operate in the supernatural and I said something like this people don't understand fatherhood or spiritual paternity the way you want to call it that's why in this church you see people that will call us mama papa we don't force people this is what they feel about us so if you feel that about me then I will be your mother if you want and call me pastor I will be your pastor if you call me prophet I will be your prophet if you call me apostle I will be your apostle if you call me teacher I will be your teacher I will be what you want me to be to you but there's people that will call me mama and papa but a lot of people criticize that you know why because they never had a natural father because they never had a natural mother. Because their father left them when they were a baby. <laughs> because their mother abandoned them when they were four years old. Because they had a dysfunctional family from the get-go. So they never understood what a real family should be like. So when God places them in a family called spiritual family, they resist and they kick and they, they throw punches and kicks because they think that they're in the wrong area.
area. They don't know because all they know has been dysfunctional. And God wants to bless you and places you in, in, in an area of blessing and you're kicking and screaming and saying, I want to get out of here. And I'm not going to call her mama and I'm not going to call her papa. Are you really inside a cry? for a mother you inside a crying for a father you inside a crying for healing and crying for restoration but but the spirit wants to but the carnal and the flesh is fighting against what God is saying in this generation God said I will turn oh the hearts of the children to the father and the father to the children God said if you didn't have a natural mother I will bring you a mother if you didn't have a natural father I will bring you a father I will give you what you need because I am the Father. I am talking about God is saying I am the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I will restore the family to where I wanted it from the beginning. Adam and Eve were made to form a family and the enemy just damaged that. And God sent Jesus to restore kingdom and family. And while this generation is screaming and kicking and criticizing the church because, oh, mama and papa, what do they, they think? They're the papa. You don't own me. And God is saying, if you just only knew, she could heal you. <laughs> If you only knew that, the, that just the embrace of that father would just complete you. Mm. It will erase the years your dad never gave to you. God said, I will return and restore things like the beginning. And God said, that's why I'm sending leaders that will be mentors, mothers and fathers in this generation. To show this generation how we're going to walk, how we're going to talk, how we're going to do things. Because you are the answer. Yes. 